I'm Zach Martin. It's a special edition of Designing for Music, which we have the Hall of Fame assembled here as far as designers go. In one corner, Spencer Drate. In the other corner, due to Salovitz. <laughs> and in the lower corner on the, the Hollywood Squares, it's Craig Braun. And, well, if you're not familiar with Craig, you will be in a second. You can go to makingvinyl.com and see some of his works and the various artists that he's been involved with over the years. But what I like about this show is the visual aspect in which we could just put our uh, artwork up for everybody to see. And we're going to start with Craig. He's got some great album covers that he's designed over the years and he's going to show us and we might make some comments about them. And luckily we've assembled quite the panel for today. So welcome Craig. I really do appreciate you being here with us, uh, designing for music and going over this great artwork that really my wife just told me yesterday. She goes, I don't know where she goes, wasn't it great when they used to have albums that had wonderful album covers and you'd like read everything about the design and it was like a present that you got on top of the record. So it seems to me that you should have talked to her before yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married for two days? Uh, <laughs> now listen, listen. 20, anyway, 21, year, well, 21 years. 21 years. Nice intro, Zach. <laughs> My son was Zach in the movie High. What was it called? Sky High, a Disney movie. And, and his his power was about, you know, uh, Superman and their, and their uh, uh, the, the, the people that were assigned, you know, Batman and Robin. Anyway, uh, here we go. The first, uh, uh, my business initially was selling printing. Then I got into display material. And I, one of my accounts was London Records. And the guy that was in charge of production there, Marty Wargo, he said to me, most of our film, most of the separations, the creative is done in London at London Decca, but we've signed an act in Detroit, a rock act. And I'm wondering if you would like to design an album cover. And without even a half a second between his question and my answer, I said, absolutely. And this is the cover. Ah, all right. The Purple wow. Gang Strikes Back, I think it's called. <laughs> so what I did is I ran around to Sam Goody and Sears and all those stores. Huh. And I, I looked at, oh, illustrating all photography. So I hired a, an illustrator and I got some black and white photographs of those guys. And that was the beginning, the genesis. And then uh, – I started fooling around with inks. You know, this is 1968, maybe 67. Uh, and so this was London, I think, London Records also. Mm. And uh, uh, the, my third album was for Atlantic, and it was called Testifying. All right. Can you see it? Clarence yeah. Carter, yeah. Clarence yeah. Carter, yeah. So – uh, I I got very turned on to the idea of creating album covers. And uh, so I'll, I'll show you a few more of the early iteration of my life. I did a lot of conventional covers, but my real, uh, I guess, signature image, iconic image has to do with doing custom or special packaging. Mm. Uh, and I'll show you some of those. But... These are just conventional covers. This is actually a posthumous Jimi mm. Hendrix album. I did wow. the, Alan Douglas, who was a producer of the album, and I have him faded on the bag. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is an album that was created with chipboard and slicks, you know, album slicks, 70 pound litho. Mm. You know, you remember those days if you're old enough. Like me. <laughs> and was, me. And Julius. Before board packaging came into vogue. Greg, okay. Craig, what were some of the tracks on that Hendrix album that you just showed us? Uh, Message to Love, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, Crash Landing, which was the title track, hmm. Come Down Hard on Me, hmm. hmm. Peace in Mississippi with the Power Stone Free. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Coconut. So yeah. these were tapes that he found and actually got into a lot of trouble because he took the drum tracks and bass tracks off and then he added horns. And so he really doctored this, uh, the masters. Oh. 
Huh. Uh, after Jimmy was dead, the estate uh, got very upset with him. In any event, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. And here's an album I did. I, I liked using uh, interesting formats. This was a uh, needlepoint cover for Albert Hammond, who was mm. a one-hit wonder. He mm -hmm. had a song, which turns out to be a lie in, in consideration of climate change. He had a big record all over the world called It Never Rains in Southern California. <laughs> we know that song. Yeah. And I, I liked using art, a lot of covers. I did this for Sid Bernstein. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. The Rascals, Search and Nearness. I'm putting it on a tilt so you don't have that. The reflection. The glare, yeah. Yeah, the glare, yeah. Let the me glare. see. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. it looks yeah. good. Looks yeah. good. Fantastic. That, was, um, that was done for, I said, Sid Bernstein, who, you know, his his big move was bringing the Beatles here. In right. Great big name. The Shea Stadium. The other guy who did that was Terror, was. Uh, Terrence Knight, Grand okay. Funk Railroad. Oh, oh wow! Oh gosh, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they both they put both brought the Beatles to. Well, they brought both both brought both groups to Shea Stadium, yeah. and when you think about it, Grand Funk, they were supposed to be the American version of Led Zeppelin, huh. and they basically sold out Shea Stadium within seventy two hours, maybe even sooner. Now think about that; they didn't have any internet, which meant that people had to go to the record shop or the ticket place or to the box office and buy the tickets. Mm. And a lot of people are familiar with that, but most people forget the opening act for that show. Does anybody in the room remember who no. opened up for grand funk in 72 humble pie. <laughs> All right. Humble pie. Now there's a band for you. Yeah, There you go. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'll fill in what you didn't say. What you didn't say is that um, Terry, what was his name? Terry Knight. Was that it? I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He uh he didn't sell out. He just started putting ads in, in the in the New York Times and the New York Post the mm. day after he started selling out. So and after two days, I think he said sold out, we're adding another show. Oh. And uh, he had sold about twenty percent of the seats. Wow, oh, that's that's this a brilliant idea. Operated, this guy he was a he was a big hustler. Right, right, right. And I did a cover for him early on. It, it, this was a very controversial cover, not the band. This is the back of it with the band on it. But the front of it, and this is the re-released front cover called Mom's Apple Pie. <laughs> the painting that he gave me was an apple pie with a vagina where the slice is out. Oh, my God. So that was a pink... Uh, it wasn't a photograph, but it was a pretty good illustration of a vagina. <laughs> and he got into all kinds of trouble when he released that. So oh, wow. I, I decided to put up a wall. I think it's got a wall now. Can you see? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I, I, and so, of course, he screamed about the First Amendment and stuff like that. But I don't even have the big cover I did for him was called E Pluribus Funk. And that was kind of the advent of um, of special packaging. Mm. I, I got one of those Denver Mint guys that did those embossed and relief uh, coins to do these three boys that were in Grand Funk Railroad. And I did a giant silver coin. And on the back, I had the Shea Stadium, and it was called E. Corbus wow. Funk on the front. I, I don't know whether you remember that or not. It was a pretty big record, though. And I said, you know, it, it, I was talking to him one day about the band. He says, they're not that good. But what I do <laughs> is I go in the center of the audience, and then I tell the guy to push the gain all the way up till it hurts my ears. And then I know they're not going to be listening so much to the quality of the band. Then I tell these kids, you know, this kid had to take his clothes off, you know, his shirt off. And he, he choreographed the whole thing. And he, <laughs> he was so proud of the fact that he got that noise up so loud. <laughs> and that was the guy. And I, I designed the uh, a logo. He started a company with Capitol Records called Brown Bag Records. And as soon as he released his first 
record. I think this was it. Uh, all of a sudden, we have a lawsuit, and they involve me. He tells them, no, go after Craig Brunt. You know? <laughs> so, so we both got sued, Terry Knight wow. Productions and, uh, and Craig Braun. And uh, it was a guy with a record shop called Brown Bag Records. Wow. So uh, I was represented at the time by a guy named Abe Summers. He's a very powerful music attorney. And they, he, he, he put me in, in the office with his litigator and, and the guy. <laughs> he was eating paper all the time. <laughs> he was like the most important litigation attorney in the entertainment business, but he was eating paper and I'm sitting there and he's chewing paper and I think he's swallowing it. And, uh, and he says, You have nothing to worry about, young man. Uh, I'll take care of everything. And no sooner than two weeks went by, and the whole thing was squashed. I don't know wow. what. It, I don't wow. know what he did. Great story. So uh, I did this. Did he cost? Was that was that attorney um, very expensive, Chris? Yeah, uh, uh, not as expensive as attorneys today. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he was well worth it, though. Got yeah, you. yeah. You you know, I was in a. I thought, you know, I was doing, I started doing kind of controversial things. You know, I did a lot of bold covers. Um, yeah, you know, now you are known for some very interesting covers. Yeah, so I didn't, you know, I, did, I didn't want any lightweight uh, representing me. So it cost me a lot of bread to be represented because there were things that came up. But mm -hmm. um, I think it was the way for me to go. I just didn't, I, I, I didn't want to uh, uh, I didn't want to have problems that would stretch yeah. out, you know, like a divorce or something like that, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'll just show you a couple more conventional kind of covers. Do you remember the guy that had a hit called Me and You and a Dog Named Boo? Yes. <laughs> that was a big record. Lobo. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. Lobo. So, Unbelievable. In yeah. fact, I just I just played that the other night for my wife. I go, you want to hear a horrible song? Here you go. <laughs> you didn't like it? I hey. thought it was the best song you ever wrote. Oh, <laughs> now, Walrus. That was ah. You heard of them? No. <laughs> you got a picture at the museum? <laughs> But anyway, they were a challenge. You know, somebody comes with the name Rhinoceros right. or something, and it's a lot of fun. So, Do you ever listen to the music, Craig? Yeah, I did then. I did then. And did that influence what you're going to put on the cover? Yeah, it did influence what I was putting on the cover in most instances. Uh, it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, many, many times I just... I was a good concept guy, and I yeah. had illustrators and designers working for me. I had an art department. I, I had a studio. I took over Richard Meyer, who was an architect. I took over three floors in a. In Wait a minute! Place. I know Richard Meyer. I know his brother. Are you talking yeah. about Richard Meyer, the architect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Richard know. Meyer, and he was wow. really too big for this building. It was right next to the Amex building, looking out. Uh, at the Lever Brothers, they had a like a piazza on 53rd and Park. You've probably seen that Lever Brothers headquarters. Mm. And my office, he he did a phenomenal job. I didn't have to touch anything. I love it. <laughs> my window, what my one side of my office was all window. It was wow. magnificent. I'm looking down Park yeah. Avenue yeah. out of Lever yeah. Brothers, <laughs> and um, so. Up on the top floor, I had I had uh, you know a studio manager, a guy, mechanical guy. Uh, I had about eight people working up there, doing all kinds of stuff. You know, we did as I said, posters, displays, all pretty much tailored to the to the uh, record business. But once in a while, movie credits and and posters for movies or something. I did one for Jimmy Guercio, the guy. Uh, uh, that recorded the Blood, Sweat, and Tears in oh. Chicago. Yeah, you know, I, I remember him telling me how, 
I, he said, I went to Clive Davis and I told him, I don't want to produce blood, sweat, and tears. He said, are you crazy? Oh, my God. Spinning wheel. They were on fire. Blood, they were big. He, said, big. he said, I found a better band. <laughs> he said, you didn't find a better band. You found someone that you liked. He said, no, they're better. And so he said, I, I want to give up Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and I'm going to record this band, Chicago. And he was so powerful at the time, Clive Davis. You know, he was like an 800-pound gorilla in the room. So, you know, when you find, okay, okay, uh, thinking, well, you, maybe they got an album that's going to sell. Craig, Craig is that Chicago you mentioned? Was that the group? Chicago, Chicago, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they, they, they sold 60 they did a, million Their copies. graphics, I want to bring up something. Their graphics were amazing on their covers, the series, right? With the uh, chocolate or the on the wall. Yeah, they did and... several versions of that logo. In fact, I did a piece of jewelry uh, for Chicago. I can show it to you. It's right here. Oh, I <laughs> love it. All right. While yeah. he's while he's going to look for that, I remember having discussions about bands like Chicago and Blood, Sweat, and Tears with Scott, yeah. Scott Muni, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm a big Blood, Sweat, and Tears fan. In fact, I just got my daughter hooked on them. Couple weeks ago, wow, they're great. I, she she loves go down gambling, go down gambling. <laughs> and, okay, and okay. So as 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 Greg Craig is gum, coming back, we used to joke like, how was the split? If they had so many guys in the band, how would they possibly make any money? You know, you had like five or ten guys. You you know, everybody got. Oh yeah, that's a, bucks. who designed go. the logo, Craig? Who designed that logo? Well, it was done. John Berg was the art director at Columbia, but he yeah. commissioned someone, probably Alan Pekulik or Tom Carney's or one of those yeah. guys, yeah. Herb, Herb Lou Allen, one of those type guys. Right. Uh, but that logo was on every single one of their albums. Yeah. And uh, great series. It's a great album series. Oh yeah, yeah, and they 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 were a monster band. Right, were guys right. from the University of Chicago. A lot of them, they were classical musicians, and they had a writing team that couldn't miss. You know, twenty five or six to four Saturday in the park. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. The Fourth of July. <laughs> love that band. Yeah. yeah, we love them. Yeah, so I showed you this, right, Barry White? No. Oh, yeah. really? uh, you, wow. we were just getting on it. What are some of the tracks in that particular album from I Barry? Told, uh, his manager, I said, you know, all of his albums, he had a group called Love Unlimited Orchestra. Everything was about, you know, right on. It was everything was about making love to my Yeah, life. baby. <laughs> and, uh, so I said, hey, I got baby. an idea. We'll do a Hallmark card for him, like, you know, huh. Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> of a Hallmark card. So that's what this is. This is, and it took me. Oh, wow! It took me the longest time to get. I said to Barry, I, I had many meetings with him, and I would count the right ons. I know if I got over twelve right ons in the meeting, <laughs> then I did well. I think you'll dig this, Barry. This is going to be a card, a love card. <laughs> right on. Right on, my brother. Like 12 by 12 love card then he says i want my girlfriend on the cover i said we're trying to sell this to all the chicks in america but i'm not gonna have your girlfriend i'll tell you what i'll put her hand in there and she had one of those hands with the with the nails that were about five and a half inches long oh lord lord yeah, wow. so yeah I, that's so, not, I read it could, yeah it could be any girl that's why do you see right. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. see it. All yeah, my yeah. hands there. Amazing. Fingernails were amazing, Craig. Yeah, the <laughs> nails were amazing. So I said, if we're just going to give a hint, you know. And yeah, so he yeah. was pleased with that. And I rented this white piano. And then the set <laughs> behind them is from 2001. I rented that from uh, MGM. Uh -huh. And they had wow. Norman Seif, who was a South African photographer. Very oh, he's great. Great. Great photographer. And he got it for me. Yep. And, uh, and uh, here's the inner sleeve. It was just a conventional card. And here was the inner sleeve. It was mm. called Stone Gone. Oh, that's Did nice. You see it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, he was a he was a great guy. Uh, I I liked him a lot. He died much too young, though. You know. Really. He died wow. very young. He was like yeah. 
Yeah, yeah diabetes. Dirty. Hey, that's a nice cover. Yeah, this I I started to get the press proofs, and I said, I'm nice just going to use the blue and the yellow here. Oh. And I said, and we'll emboss it, you know, because it's nature. We'll emboss it. I don't know whether you can see the texture or wow. the. Wow. Yeah. yeah, great idea. Texture, but I love the, yeah. Yeah. Photograph is great, uh, Craig. Well, you yeah, are. Great photograph. He was a he was a very close friend of mine, Q. Wow. And so this is a little <laughs> love for me. But oh, beautiful he's a Chicago guy, you know. I'm a Chicago yeah, yeah. guy. Craig, anyway, were you uh, the one who was instrumental in picking up picking the um, photographer? Did you pick the photographers? No, it was the, it was the, we we used the guy at uh, Jim Marshall. I think he was at. Uh, oh wow! A and M. <laughs> he was the A and M photographer. He was great. Jim but I'll look to make sure if you're interested. No, I'm just curious because I, you know, whether you, what, what, you know, whether you were. Jim McCrary. I'm sorry, Jim McCrary, not okay. Jim Marshall. Okay. I knew right. Jim Marshall too. He was yeah. a troubled guy, but very good photographer. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so then that, that, that's when I started fooling around. I tell you, inks, different materials. We're printing on board now so we can add panels. Uh, I did <laughs> this album. I'm not real proud of it, but it's um, it's it, it's sold, I don't know, millions. Oh, yeah. Wow. This yeah. guy's name was Bobby Sherman. Yes. He was. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was 38. But he was on the cover of all the teen magazines. All the I, I, so I said, I said to his manager, I said, I, I'm going to give you a cover that all these 13 year old girls are going to be pulling their donuts when they see this and they play the records. <laughs> That's great, man. So I put oh, I like that, yeah. thing, you know, that they could hang in their bedroom. Right, right. With Bobby. He is yeah. Bobby. Now, Bobby Sherman, he did Bobby acting. Sherman, yeah. And, and here, he uh, this I perforated so they could put it in a frame. It was like a, a self destruct album that was going to have further use. You know? Oh, that's great. And uh, here was the sleeve. Wow. All well, these Think girls it, just. Uh, I, you know, you know, Craig, this is a good fan base type thing, you know, for kids. Because yeah. they got a lot of pictures, right? You really thought yeah. about that. A lot of pictures. And, um, yeah, like here's the inside of the front cover. Yeah, wow. That's yeah. nice. And, nice. Uh, and then there was another one with the tune lineup. Right, right. Oh, okay. yeah, they, they love this guy. Yeah. The guy uh, yeah. running the label was the editor for Billboard for many years, Tommy Noonan. Ah. And that's how I got involved. I did all their advertising, everything. Well, Bobby Sherman appeared on some 70s TV shows along with uh, Emergency. And uh, after he after he appeared on Emergency, you remember it was about the paramedics in the L.A. County Fire Department. He ends up becoming an EMT and involved with uh, CPR and those type of programs. Right wow, now, yeah. he's got a uh, an organization that raises money to help animals. So oh, that's great. what Bobby Sherman is up to these days. That's wow. great to hear. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a cool dude. Maybe um, Doris Day gave him the baton. Maybe. Maybe. But, yeah, the chicks chicks really liked Bobby Sherman, that's for sure. Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, so that same kind of idea I used. Holland Dozier, Holland got a hold of me. Because I, I was Motown's ad agency. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. For a number wow. of years. And... Um, their, some of their head writers, Holland Dozier, out. They started their own yeah. label called Invictus, and they called me in because they had that Band of Gold uh, record that was a big seller. Big so seller. I did this. She was she was so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that I used that same idea, uh, the Bobby Sherman idea. Photographs. Oh, the fold out poster, yeah. Yeah, fold out. It's too big to show you. But yeah, it's, yeah, that's great. A yeah, great idea. A great idea. Yeah. And, uh, and the inside, black and white, the whole, the whole. Oh, material. that's nice. And that's, the, the, that's the photographs were so good. I told him, let's call it contact because I was looking at the contact sheet. And they said, fine, whatever you like. 
You know, uh, Craig, I want to bring something up. In that era, there was a lot of special type things with board and covers and fold outs. What company did that? Were there certain companies that got into that? Well, I formed a company with uh, Jim Ladwig. Uh, H-E-I. H-E-I. Yeah. I formed that company with uh, Jim and a guy who was like a production guy named Don Kosterka. Uh-huh. Uh, I did not get along with that guy. Jim was a very good friend of mine. Uh, so after a year, I gotta get over there and help you fold that album cover. <laughs> yeah, and somehow it's not folding. <laughs> Tell us about AGI, uh, Jim. Uh, did you have you were associated with them, right? AGI because they did a lot of special yeah, packages. Yeah, AGI, yeah, I started that company with them, and after about a year, I uh, divorced them. I couldn't wow. get along with this guy. He was, oh, sorry. He, was being, he was being penny wise and foolish with me. Wow. So I started my own company called Sound Packaging Corp. Cool. And so I started producing these packages. And my business model was simple and somewhat elegant, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of money. Wow. I gave away the design for nothing. They wow. didn't even pay for a photostat, wow. but I produced the album. So these oh, albums, yeah. me, I produced all of them. That's a lot. Great. So, Great deal. You know, the average designer was getting probably 2500 for a cover, something like right, that. Right, right. I was making 50 grand on a package. Right, exactly. Oh, my right. God, how smart were you? Yo, right. I was a Chicago street kid. That's why. Ah. That's a good story. Anyway, so I, I, I got into these things, you know. I I, I thought the, the the business was so steeped in conventionality and, and, and predictability that anything that I did, you know, pretty much started to stand out, not just as packages, but attracting managers, producers, and the acts themselves, you know. And and the labels hated it because every one of the covers that I did was going to cost them extra bread, extra money. Right? So they say, "Don't go to Craig Braun." And say, I'm already there, man. <laughs> you know. And, I, and my other thing was, I wanted a half a million to start so that I get the quantities up there. So if there was any hand operations, wow. I could bring the price down. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you're doing ten thousand. You know, yeah. covers can be two and a half dollars a piece, but when you're doing right. five hundred thousand, they're thirty-four cents a piece. Or something. That's right. Yeah. So you I, only you could only design for, you know, big time bands. You yeah, know, pretty much, pretty much. I did make a couple of exceptions, but pretty much. So the indie people couldn't even, couldn't come close to you. Yeah, I, I had to turn down a lot of you know new acts. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if I heard an act like Chicago, I'll do it. I'll do it. Question: If you had heard the tape of Bon Jovi's "Runaway," right? Sure. He comes sure. into your office and he plays a tape, a cassette. Yeah. No one's heard of Bon Jovi except you know the little bars in New Jersey. Yeah. And he's like, okay, you know, this is this is what he's recording at the studio at the moment. Plays, plays that. Would you have, um, yes, you have uh, gone for it? Would you have yeah. designed for him? Yeah, yeah. I be, I, I became, I, you know, I, just to say that there are a few guys with great, great ears in the business. Ahmed Erdogan, Leonard Chess. There were people that had those ears that they knew a hit the moment they heard it. But I started picking up their, I'd, I'd start analyzing who they were signing because, right, right. because my deal was this also, that yeah. they would come back to me for reorders. Oh and my they, you know, might go to Cocker and they say, well, we're only going to take 25,000 <laughs> reorder. So I had to say, is this going to be big? What do I think? Right. So I tell my production manager, okay, on that Mad Dog's an Englishman, mm. go for an extra two fifty. Wow! It. Yeah, because you know, we're going to get reorders. That that double record set is going to sell. So That's right. I had to develop my ears. I did take a few baths, but 
by and large, I, I came out on top. On top, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Hmm. So speaking of the devil, this was All right. a, project I did with, uh, a guy yeah. who became my partner, Tom Wilkes. We wow. On oh, this. Tom Wilkes is great. Tom Wilkes is great, Craig. Yeah. Yeah, he was my partner in the early 70s. So this came, this opened inside to Ooh, a yeah. Wow. That's so nice. That's nice. And uh, all these people that traveled, you know, the guy that really put this together, oh, it's uh, Leon Russell. Leon Russell. I'm wow. Sorry. Oh, and, uh, wow. Leon Russell. Now you're talking. Who doesn't oh. know Leon Russell? Tom and I did a, an album for him. Oh, he's Leon great, man. Live. Great album. Leon. Great album. Great Gigantic album. Gigantic music talent. Yep. Amazing. Gigantic music talent. Yep. He, he was beyond problems, uh, but he, he was so talented. Yeah. Uh, so this Mad Dog's an Englishman. This probably sold two and a half million copies. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it opened inside, you know, to four panels. Nice. Four nice. Shots oh, my God. And everything. That's great. Yeah. Beautiful. She came through the bathroom window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A beautiful cover. Yeah. Now, now, Craig, there's a lot of people involved. Who did the artwork on that? Yeah, Was yeah. No, a, a guy, an illustrator out there did, uh, you know, he took the photograph and he made mm -hmm. these borders. Uh, beautiful let me, stuff. Let me see if I can get that guy's name. Let's see. Ron, illustration. Ron Wolin was his name. Oh, Ron yeah. Wolin. Never heard of him. Yeah. Beautiful. So he worked on putting the pictures together like yeah. a, you know, like an innocent kind of scrap, a very minimal kind Beautiful. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, there's always people that collaborate with you. You guys know that. You do, you've do. you designed some albums, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We know that. Sometimes Jerusalem. they're outside. Sometimes they're inside. Yeah. Yeah. We found a guy at Stanford University. Now, Keep in the context of time. This is the early 70s. Right. This guy claimed to be able to photograph the human aura. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. He, was he wasn't like a jive-ass guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't yeah. really even looking for attention. Right. So we went to him uh, for this cover. This I got to see. Oh, wow. Famous. Famous, famous cover. This Very was living cover. in the material world. Yeah. Harrison. Great cover. Great yeah. cover. And here's the back cover. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't realize that with the photography. You know, it was a beautiful cover. Yeah, and it was yeah, a You picked the right artist to do that. Yeah, and this is my lawyer's house, Abe Summers. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, in Beverly Hills. Can oh, I beautiful. ask a question and, about that? Uh, you know who's there? Lee Michaels and. Uh, oh, God. Uh, let me tell you who's in that picture. That's a great crew. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, a great crew. Uh, yeah. A Ringo, <laughs> Alex Borman. Oh, uh, yeah. Eric wow. Clapton. Oh. Uh, Ry Cooter. Oh. You know, fantastic. all these. These guys, they were great. Well, great guys, great guys. Yeah, yeah guys. great guys. Oh, that's well, a beautiful that's cover. Right. Is even Matt, there. Matt, you had a question. And yeah, that photo of the guys at the table, it almost looks as if it was kind of comparable to All Things Must Pass, the type of photography. I don't know yeah, if there was any crossover. Yeah, a little, bit, yeah, a little bit. Uh, it was in the lawn. I remember that, this long lawn. With the house in the background, we had the girl. What did we have? We had the the babysitter with a carriage <laughs> back there. <laughs> That's great. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so maybe you can see. Yeah, you I see, see her in the background. Do you see the girl? Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, Abe's babysitter, you know, to take care of his babies. Oh, and that's the limo, great. that old limo in the back. I think it's an old Mercedes limo, and there's a Porsche in front of the in front of the garage. Where yeah, is I see that? It. This is in uh, California, Beverly Hills. Wow. Yeah. But well, I mean, I'm going to have to find Beverly that Hills out. down near Sunset Boulevard, you know. It's, it's, so, it's, so uh, Craig, if people don't know, Danny Harrison is the son of George, great musician, Danny Harrison. 
Yeah, it looks just like George. I saw him at the tribute, you know, that uh, Clapton yeah. and a bunch of guys uh, got together. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're great. Oh, yeah. So this was uh, George insisted on this insert being printed. You know, it was his period oh, with Ravi Shankar. Yeah. Right. That's beautiful. That so is that's beautiful. inside. That's inside. That's a beautiful cover. I'm selling these albums before I die. <laughs> But I've sold, I, I have about 400 albums up for sale on a thing called Discogs, if you ever heard of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, Big no, company. I, I bought from them, Craig. I bought some 45s and LPs from the Discogs. Yeah, so there's, uh, they sell things. Uh, they probably sold 50 of my albums. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. I showed you this. I don't want to open it because it's still in the shrink wrap. So some, some schmuck will play an extra 50 <laughs> bucks, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. for this. Because it's, it's never played, you know. It's still oh, great. Right. Mint condition. You really Mint. shouldn't call me a <laughs> schmuck. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Jack. I, I, I would buy that, yeah. <laughs> and never open it? Would yeah, I, I told you. What I, never I, it. Well, no. I, I always had a habit of buying, if I really like the album, like Physical Graffiti, I have a copy I've never opened in the copy that I play. Oh. Uh, same thing with In Through the Outdoor. I got four different copies. And two of which I so six all together. Two I play for have never been opened. That's like the people who collect, um, you know, so, uh, figures. I did well, a cover that got nominated for a Grammy, and the first idea I was, I was just in. I was in my studio one night, high, right. probably right. ten o'clock at night. And I was looking at the cigarette papers on my desk, and I thought, this be an album cover. That's how, that's how I thought. I a regular designer. When you're yeah. smashed. So I put this together for the star. Oh, yeah, man. You know, when they it. commissioned me to do the Sticky Fingers cover, right. I, I gave them about six other comps. So mm. this, you know, they loved it, but they wanted to go with the zipper, real zipper. Right. So uh, this is what it eventually became. Oh, it was even oh, more appropriate. You repurposed. Me. That's great. I'm That's sure you're showing that was that that was Lou Adler too. Uh huh. Yeah. And Very inside, cool. did you ever see the inside? I had I printed parchment, like twenty pound parchment. Oh really? To make the wow. paper. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a good touch. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's perfect for Cheech and Chong. Yeah. That's excellent. It was yeah. perfect. And here's a picture that I. That I took for the inside. Oh, that's a great photograph, man. Adorable. Yeah. Great photograph. Great yeah. photograph. I've been working with Tommy's uh Tommy's daughter, Robbie, uh, is making a documentary. Oh, about really? Them. And so I gave him a lot of the early material, the oh, ads I great. did, and all that stuff. Yeah. Now you can find Cheech and Chong selling C B D products on Facebook. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Those two are a crack up. So what else? Oh, this one was also a nominee. And the ironic thing is that I don't have the record. It, it's it was. Oh a, man, I have that's that. Craig. I have that cover. Yes. This is for Ch uh, Shep Gordon. Yeah, Alice Cooper. That's a great yeah. Cover. Alice goes okay. out. I found this old school desk. Wow. And took pictures yeah. of it, and then I had a retoucher. Uh, right, the retoucher. Left and right sides together, so we could make it a square desk. Uh huh. And then I carved up the, the band members' initials. I love that cover, Craig. And, I love and that. Tom cover. was with me at the time, uh, and uh, he helped with it too. Tom Wilkes, because he he yeah. joined me. This was already designed, but he helped put together the final art on it. Uh, so Beautiful. you can see our logo. I don't know if you know what logo that we came up with. Warner Brothers. A dog. Yeah. A dog uh, can you see that? No. On the left, you got to move it over a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah. There's there we the go. Dog. There's a dog. Yeah, I see. Dog it. with an idea balloon, and we painted this dog so that his eyes were pinned, dilated. You know, <laughs> it was like an acid. This was right. an acid. <laughs> <clears throat> so inside, you know, in the construction mm. was. Uh, the actual sides, you know, that you yes. can open it. Yeah. The make a desk out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You can make a desk. And I told everyone in my studio, I said, put, um, 
put chewing gum on the, behind this desk and a lot of boogers. If you can put boogers, pick your nose. I want a real legitimate bottom of this desk for the back. <laughs> so they did. It's and, a beautiful uh, cover. And oh, then disinfected. You open it up. You see Alice in a photograph. And uh Oh yeah, it's nice. Uh, there's slingshots, switchblades, marbles, Liberace comic book, and uh, oh yeah. yeah. Is uh, oh, hey, Greg, is school is out on that album? Yeah, school yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, that it's, 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 uh, Spencer. Yeah. You think schools out would work with this? Yeah. <laughs> let, I'm telling tell you, that's you. the great. That's what you talk about well, when you're talking but, about concept of the doing with music. for that. Yeah. Was that I put women's underwear on the vinyl? <laughs> That's true. I was wow. the largest purchaser of women's underwear wow. that year in the world. Wow! And it was, uh, and I I had it monogrammed with uh, AC on it, uh -huh. and wow. I put it around the vinyl record. That's incredible. And I got uh, into the first. The first 500,000 came in from Europe. I, I found the guy in London that manufactured these disposable kind of paper underwear, paper, you know, like PPE, what they use yeah. in the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. So I ordered a half a million, you know, <laughs> uh, my production guy, because we had to put this out in April. And then I said, and get a million more, because this, this song went right to number one. Right, it did. It did. School's out forever. Oh, gosh. And so then I said, how much is that going to cost in the plane? You know, so he told me it was, it was telephone numbers. Get them on a boat. They came over to Philadelphia and the uh, custom FDA or whatever it is. They stopped it. They they looked and they said, this is women's wearing apparel. And I said, <laughs> I said I guys, they call this guy that's in charge and tell him this is a promotional gimmick. It's going on a record. <laughs> he comes back in my office. He says, they don't care. For him, it's wearing <laughs> apparel. So he, he said, there's two oh. options. You can cut the crotches out or you can find a chemical place that will dip those in quantity to mm. deflammatize them. Incredible. So I said, I'm not cutting the crop. Ah. That, that's a it's a bridge too far for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, find the guy that'll do it. So he finds okay. he finds a guy outside of Toronto with a, a, you know some chemical plant. And uh, he comes in, he says, I got the place. So I said, ship them all up there. But verify that they will not light. You can't light them because they're going to test them. They're going to use a lighter to see if they can light them. He said, mm -hmm. okay. Two days later, the largest snowstorm that ever hit the East Coast. Wow. I can't tell you the year, but I'm going to say 71, 72. Everything for me is in that niche. I only was in business from 65 to 75. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so... Uh, he says, yeah, yeah, it's good. And th th this fluid that they're going to dump these vats of these these women's underwear, we didn't tell them about the first human, but <laughs> <laughs> so he says, it's going to be fine, but the problem is we can't ship. No one can get to the dock. You know, the, the, the <laughs> snow is four feet high. You know, it, no one's moving. <laughs> The whole East Coast is frozen. So I said, call Warners and tell them that we have this problem and there's going to be a little delay. <laughs> we don't know exactly how long, but there'll be a delay, but not to worry. Because I had a lot of money tied up in those packages, you know, those yeah. Yeah. So I think four or five days went by, maybe close to a week. Before they could be picked up, the dock was functioning again, and the truck could pick them up. And so they went up to Canada. It took a day to get up to Canada. And then three or four days later, they said, okay, they're all ready. 
just give us the instructions where they're going to go. You know, we're <laughs> right. pressing plants all yeah. over America. Yeah. And so I, I said uh, to my guy, I said, Lou, call the production person, find out what pressing plants and what the allocation is. So he comes back in my office five minutes later and sweat pouring off his, his head. <laughs> And he's looking at the floor like he's going to tell me that my cat and my dog died. Oh. So I said, what's wrong? He said, they couldn't wait. They found someone in Mexico. Oh, my God. So, yeah. So uh, they don't want to give us any shipping instructions. Oh, no. I said, are you serious? He said, yeah. Oh, my he God. Said, yeah. They got a guy. The guy's delivered them already. They're in the pressing plants. And so I saw myself eating women's underwear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, oh, what a well, story. I, I took the logo, you know, on a poster. I had a poster with the dog on it. Yeah. And I told him, you know, I said, I need six tubes with the posters. And I want you to put a piece of tape on the nose of the dog and tape the underwear to the dog's mouth, roll it up, and I'll give you Stan Corn and Joe Smith, Mo Austin, chairman of Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah. So I had all the key guys that run the whole company. Hmm. And I said, and send those out air freight. I want them to get them tomorrow morning. But I want you to write on the underwear, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. <laughs> so, uh, so, oh my God! And and Stan Cornyn, there, vice president, creative director, he calls me, and he's laughing his ass off. And he's in the he's in the chairman's office, Mo Austin's office. Wow! And all of them are there, and they're breaking up. They they're laughing their ass. I said, wow. Here I make I, I you know I call, I call, <laughs> I call he calls me and we speak and he I said. I said, you know, I got a guy from the Washington Post, Lee Zito, to write an article that was syndicated in 200 newspapers across the country saying that the United States government was holding up the release of this album. Wow. That's not worth anything? Mm. Wow. So, no, so he said, no, yeah, okay, Craig, this is funny. And he says, uh, well, we'll see what happens, but when you don't worry, something something will happen. Yes, yeah. no, no, I I don't want something will happen. I want to hear you say you're taking them. That's that's right, the answer. Right, interesting. Right. So I could hear a little back and forth, and he says, "Craig, we're taking all of them, whether we need them or not." Wow! And I Great. say, "Today is your lucky day." <laughs> he says, why? Why is it my lucky day? I said, "Because if you rejected." this i was going to hire one or two helicopters and <laughs> drop that underwear all over the warner brothers lot and <laughs> and so mo austin says to him would this guy do something like that and he yeah said, yeah he would do it, <laughs> he <could> do it. <laughs> i said you got that right <laughs> So great story, great story. We take everything. So I thought I'd, I'd tell you that little story because that's, that's quite a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite a story. Any underwear left over? Uh, <laughs> do I, do you want some? <laughs> what? No, no. <laughs> no, she doesn't use those. It wasn't quality <laughs> underwear. It wasn't great. Uh, <laughs> So what to, what to do? Uh, so maybe I show you the sticky fingers cover. We talk about All that. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and Craig, tell us about the logo uh, sequence, the step by step on that also, and the cover. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Marshall Chess was hired by uh, Mick uh, to run the Rolling Stone record label. They after their contracts expired with Decca London. Uh, the Stones were desperate to get off that label because it was, you know, it was Engelbert Humperdinck and Montavani and you know, yeah. you know, Zither people and stuff. So they wanted desperately to get off. They couldn't relate to anybody. You know, these were kind of uptight public school English gentlemen. And so they decided to form their own label and they hired Marshall because he left. His father sold, sold chess records to a tape replicator. And Marshall was made president, but after he dealt with these people, they were in Oakland, California, I think, 
And he said, I got to get out of here. I, I can't be with these people. You know, they didn't understand anything about chess records and what he would do. And so Mick called him like two weeks after that. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, I'm available. So Marshall was a very close friend of mine. And mm -hmm. so it was an automatic thing for him to get a hold of me. And he said, you know, Mick got this idea from Andy Warhol that, you know, one of the clubs, Arthur's on Dean, one of the clubs in New York, about using an actual zipper on a cover, you know, a pair of Levi's. I said, okay, I got it. I got it. So I said, let me put together some comps for you. And I have a few other ideas that I think are real good. And I showed you one of them, you know, that rolling paper one. Yeah. Uh, and so he said, great. So this is probably, I'm going to say around the fall of 1970, 1970. And um, they've done a deal. And the Stones have put together a rough mix of the album that's to come out. They want to call it Sticky Fingers. And so I, I'm in California, and, and Marshall says, why don't you come over? The sales, the entire sales force is here. They're having meetings, and they're going to play the Stones album for them. So this is one of those opportunities I was telling you about, the ears. Yeah. So I, I sit there, and I listen to this album. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Marshall, it would be big, man. Yeah. And so uh, he said, yeah, yeah, it's very strong. So I left, but I, I all of a sudden it was like like a meth high kind of thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a home run with people on the bases. Mm. So uh, I started working on these comps and spent quite a bit of time on the zipper idea. It was complicated because... I didn't know whether I should go old school and have it fabricated by a place called Modern Album over in Long Island, um, you, you know, because putting the zipper in, it had to be glued in, and it was a special tricky size. I didn't know whether we could get a right angle gluer to right. put the panel. It was, it was complicated. It was complicated. Yeah. So before I present an idea, I have to know I can produce it. Otherwise, right. they right. say, yeah, we want it, and then I'm pounding salt. So, uh, yeah, so, I, you know, finally we came up with some constructions that could be done on board. And uh, we put together a comprehensive presentation. I met with Marshall here in New York, and he loved everything, uh, in particular, like that bamboo package. But he said, they're not going to go for that, man, because Mick wants to do the zipper. Zipper. <laughs> he's talking about he wants the zipper. I said, okay, okay, we're going to go with the zipper. I said, but there's some things I got to work out on that first, uh, you know, because I'm 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 worried about the metal, uh, and right. and the back of the zipper, even though it's flat, if if there's a lot of weight put on it, it could damage the tracks, you know, ah, right? Because it's going right the, the 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 inner sleeve is the only thing protecting the record, right. so I decided to do a panel that would fold in trying to find out how to glue it, you know, and uh, finally we got the guy, uh, the die cutter, the glue. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. You know, so it's no problem. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so I went ahead uh, and uh, put together that. I called Andy and I said, listen, get that same guy that you used. I know the guy's name. I'm not telling you. But I said, get the same guy. And I said, and I want I want you to have him play with his before you start shooting these Polaroids. And he he practically had an orgasm. Oh, 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 that's wonderful. I said, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm just trying to match the front of the package. That's all, man. Yeah. I didn't want to lose that. Are you talking you know? about Andy Warhol? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So he shot the pictures. He got this this kid. He shot the pictures. And he sent them to me, and I said, I want them in color because the original ones were in black and white because I was converting them, I mean, you guys know, with line conversions, mezzo tint. I wanted that stipple effect that would make it look like denim. But in those days, you know, Polaroid cameras, they were all always out of focus. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and it was just a gray picture, you know, with an image on it that was faded mm -hmm. and, and, and out of focus. So I, I had to do a lot of manipulation on this to make it look like blue jeans. In fact, 
ultimately, I printed it with two blacks and one blue. Mm. Wow. No, really? I was nuts, but I wanted I wanted to get the depth. I wanted the three dimensional yeah. depth of the thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so that panel went in, and then I, I, I told my people to do a construction, like we got to do some kind of a Chinese packing thing for the pressing plants because the the front of the zipper has that little curvature that holds the pull, mm. and so I said that can be more dangerous even. So let's get maybe single sided corrugated and maybe notch it out. Mm. So they did that. So then we we tell uh, the Erdogans, yeah, well, okay, we're ready to go. <laughs> so they ordered 50,000 or something to, to do a test run. I don't know whether it was a test run, but I think they had orders. They had a lot of advance orders. Mm. So this is April 1971. Mm. So I get a call from Nesui Erdogan's assistant, mm. maybe – four or five days after they arrived to the pressing plants and they were shrunk wrapped and then they were, were shipped out and like half of them came back because the, uh, on side on the B side, the second track sister morphine had a dent in it. Oh my God. I'm going to eat again, eating underwear, eating zippers. I mean, I was <laughs> <laughs> you took chances like I took. You know, I really rolled the dice with this. And so Nessa, we called me. He says, Craig, what are you doing, man? I told you to print that zipper. I said, hey, it wasn't up to me. Mick wanted it. Marshall Chess right, wanted it. Right, right. You know, I had to deliver that. And that's what I've done. But we just hold on. Let me let me work on it. So, again, uh, I put uh, I was in a period of better living through chemistry. So <laughs> Uh, one night about, I don't know, maybe that same night, maybe it was the same night that I heard from Nestle. He said things like, I'm going to put you out of business. You know, we're going to do a million, million and a half of these albums and they're going to be bouncing back the returns. Mm. You're going to have to pay for them, Craig. Sure. Needless to say, I was a little fearful. So yeah. I, I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. How can we get the zipper away from the tracks? Mm. It took me yeah. a while to figure that out. So I decided we, if we could pull the zipper down, then that round nub mm. will be in the center disc label. Right, right. Answers. Yep. So I called Nestle this next morning. I said, I got it. I got the solution. We're going to have to hire a bunch of little old ladies down at the end of the, <laughs> at the, end of the uh, assembly line. And they're going to pour the shrink wrap. we got to wait until it's dry. You know, the fabric on the zipper right, is right. dry. Oh, right. Then we're going to have those little old ladies pulling the zippers down into the center disc area. And uh -huh. it's going to make a more effective package because it's just more sexy, you know. So, yeah. Uh, so he said, uh, do a test, see if it works. I, I was pretty convinced that it would work. Yeah. The only question was, when they were pulling it down, was it going to pull the fabric out? In other words, with right. the glue. So I said, right. I said to my production, I get a hold of the, the, the guy that's fabricating, putting these zippers, and tell him, I want the strongest glue known to man to hold the fabric. Zip, down. Yeah, hold the so, zipper. So they did that. And the ran the test it was successful and the, and the rest is is history. So it's a you know when you when you're adventuresome, there's always dues to pay, and I've paid plenty of them, but I, I did come out on top, I have to say, and it sounds arrogant of me to say, but it's the truth. It's a great cover. It's uh it got voted like best cover by VH1, yeah. the best cover of the uh, whatever world. You yeah, know? I can tell you that uh that was sixty no, that was 71. So I'm going to the Grammys. And because I'm nervous, I write down a little speech, you know, mm. talk about Andy and Marshall. You know, I'm going to get the right. Grammy for best album cover. Right. right. No, right. There's no doubt in my mind about it. <laughs> it's a big table. And I'm high. 
uh, as you know. <laughs> and the guy next to me, you know, I think it was Tony Graboy, a guy that worked for me. And uh, they come to this best album cover of the year, 1971, is Pollution. What? I said, Tony, what, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> pollution, pollution. No, there's a mistake. There's a, there's, there has to be a mistake here. Yeah. And I got my little speech in my hand. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. All right. Jesus Christ. I said pollution. And then you show a picture of it. And it's a cover with a baby chick standing next to an egg that's broken open. And the baby chick has a miniature gas mask on. Wow. <laughs> I, don't that that was the Grammy. I don't believe no, it. No lie. That was the Grammy winner. Unbelievable. That, winner for that year, I probably was lucky to get home that night. You know, I probably ordered four martinis or something like that. I hasten to add that I've been sober and clean for 41 years. It's the reason I'm yeah. able to talk to you oh, right now. But in those days. No. Yeah, you know, Craig, I got to tell you something. I was a Grammy judge for about seven times. And, but the thing that you had going, which is usually a big thing, it's like Super Tramp, uh, Breakfast in America. That album sold a lot. That's what I don't understand. Also, besides the great graphics you did. Is oh, that yeah. It's big, uh, yeah, it's a very big record. Big. Yeah. I think yeah. I think what it had to do with is that we were, it was too sexual, you know. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. it, it, right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. It's Judith. Yeah, Judith, you are right because Sears, those family stores, you know, yeah. uh, what was that Corvettes or whatever? You know, these, yeah. these stores where families went to buy music and right, other right. stuff, department stores, they wouldn't take it. They wouldn't take wow. it. Really? So it was hurt, and and uh, and Erdogan's tried to convince Chess to to yank it, you know, to put a different cover. He said, "No, no, no." He wasn't, he, you know, he wasn't going to get between the, yep. and the yep. public. People right. will take it or they won't. So right. he's absolutely right that that was a big consideration, and the and those associations, you know, NARM and the and the Grammy committees, the kind of stuff that I was doing, it was repulsive to them sometimes, you know. Well, so. I think they just didn't have an understanding, you know. They're, you know, the that's why we had there are artists, and then there, you know, there and then there's the business side. Uh, I'll tell you something, uh, Craig. Being a Grammy judge for so many times, we had so many fights with them. You have no idea. Uh, we'd be calling up the Grammy office and say, "What the hell is going on here?" You know, it's a lot of politics. That's one thing. You know that. But tell, us about, tell us about the logo. Tell us about the logo thing. Yeah, too. so the logo, uh, it, it, here's the other thing. Uh, I'm working on the uh, the mechanicals, you know, getting a copy, legal copy, publishing, and all that stuff. And we're putting together the album art. I'm putting together uh, – I, I, I brought the comps. I told you that, that Marshall said we're going to go with the zipper. So that was it. So we started putting together these mechanicals, and they were multi-panel, huge, <laughs> huge, you know, like four wow. foot by six foot, uh, and um, you know, special sleeve, the whole thing. And I said, Marshall, this is their first release. So, they, is there a logo? Do they have a logo? And he said, uh, Mick's got some kid uh, that goes to art school over there, some art college or something. He told the kid, it's not. It's not really for the logo for a record company. He told him you want something for programs or something, you know, yeah, like yeah. sketch pads and stuff. He, I said probably because Mick doesn't want to pay more than 10 pounds for the logo probably. <laughs> so I said, uh, I said, so get it for me. He said, I'm not going to get between him and this kid because they've met two or three times and this kid is working on it and Mick loves this kid. So <laughs> I said, can you send me – is there a sketch or anything? Do you have anything? He said, yeah, they made, they gave me this black and white sketch, but it's not the logo, but it's the idea, just yeah. the idea that it's a tongue and lips. That's, that's it. So mm -hmm. I said, can you send me that? So he sends it to me on a thermal fax machine. <laughs> it was already illegible before he sent it on the thermal fax. 
<laughs> so I called my studio guy and I said, come down here. I said, this thing that you see, this little smudge here, this silhouette, I want you to blow it up 12 inches. We're going to try and decipher this. It's a tongue and lips thing. And we're going to try and create one because I was in the mouth of the gun on this thing in terms of getting started with the production. Mm -hmm. And all the spotlights were on this first release for the Stones and Ahmed Erdogan, everybody. The whole industry was on it. It, it was just lit up like a Christmas tree. So I said, uh, just let's, let's, let's see what we can do. So they, they started bringing sketches down to me. They had two, I had two illustrators doing, working in tandem on the thing. And I would mm. say, no, no, let's, let's, let, let's make the throat deeper and, this, and put this little notch in the center of the tongue. And th th so we went through about six or seven and I said, we got it. Ah. So ah. I said, so I said, put it on, into the mechanical as though it's done. It's a finished mm. mechanical. Wow. I'm going to send it to London and we're going to get the Stones and Marshall to okay it. So I call in this uh, account guy that I had, Mark Finnell. I said, I said, Mark, you're on a mission. It's got to be a mission possible. Mm. The most important thing is that you don't speak. I'm reminded at Bullets Over Broadway. Do you remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> and she says, we'll have two martinis and dry up. And, and he says, wow. He, the writer looks at her. He says, oh, thank you. That's great. And she said, and give him whatever he wants, too. <laughs> so, so when he would start talking, she would put her her index finger in his mouth. Don't speak. Don't speak. She just wanted to. I think it was Madeline Kahn. I'm trying to think of who it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a funny scene. Anyway, I said, don't talk about anything. You don't know. So when he says, you know, what about this logo or anything like that? Say, I don't know anything. I'm just a messenger here. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to bring the artwork and get an okay. That's all you're to say. Don't right. venture a guess. Don't right. try to be an ass kisser or people pleaser. None of that. Okay, so I call Marshall. I say, my guy will be there in the morning and, uh, you know, come in the late morning. Will Mick be there? 11, 12. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he shows up. They look at the artwork on the desk. Mick says, it's great. All right. It's great. Wow. So my guy puts everything back in this case. Yeah. He calls me from the airport and he says, they've okayed the art. We're in All like right. We can go. We can go. So, so uh, wait a minute. I got to ask you a question. When you read on the internet about all the stories behind it, there's always the name John Posh. What yeah, he's the, the kid. Yeah. What? Yeah, he's the guy that Mick, uh, Mick got. Yeah, he's the guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the guy, he's the guy that it. Mick I hired. I got it. I got it. Yeah. No, the thing is, this is a stroke of maybe ironic injustice for him, mm. you know, because when when my production guy says, "What what do we do about the UK?" <laughs> and I, was, I said, "I don't want to light this thing up." You're right. So, call the production guy at Wea and tell him this kid is working on a logo that Mick wants. And they don't use inner sleeves there. They, mm. Their their jackets are sleeves. Right. No, sure. that, that, that's right. They call an album jacket a sleeve. So I said, tell them to, to do an insert, you know, with the tune lineup and the credits on one side and the logo on the other. And, and No, the logo and the tune lineup on one side and the other side. Use the photograph, this photograph that I put on it. Ah. So on the other Thank side you. of the insert. So here's ah. the logo that I that I did. Yeah, it's I would say I did in collaboration with my people. Yeah, that's the logo. So oh. here's the stroke of unfair irony to John Pash. That logo that you saw on my sleeve. Yeah. Well, it was it was early. It was it was in early April, and this and the UK version came out in May. Yeah. But whoever was in charge of like 
choosing a default logo between the two of them, mm. they all wanted this logo that I did. Right. They all wanted it. And right. they used it for everything, for the role, for the tour, for the advertising, right. all the merchandising. They sell, I don't know, $300 million a year in merchandising. That logo, that logo was they used. And guess what? I never got a halfpenny in England. That means a half a penny. Wow. And I used to say to people back then, I said, you know, this logo, <laughs> this could be as big as the Playboy logo someday. Right, right. It's it a dwarf. It the Still. Playboy logo is nothing compared to this logo. Yeah, yeah. So are you so, telling us you never paid for that logo? No, no, because I told you my business model, didn't I? But you were production. You were you were one of the producers of that album. Yeah, I produced it. So you I, made a billion dollars. I manufactured. I made a lot of money manufacturing the album. Oh my uh, so, God. you know, maybe I was a monetary obsessed person, but in those days now when people talk to me and I, 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 people call to talk about things like this, I say, it's not such a big deal. You know, it wasn't a big deal. I would be working on a Carpenter's album one week and then Stone's album the next week and, the, you know, Mary Hopkins album. I didn't. I didn't think of these things as in any way, you know, Smithsonian material. You did. And the, you do. Yeah, and the ones that the ones I was most interested in were the special packages, you know, where I was using right. embossing, different die cutting, and all that right. stuff. Right. Right. And so that was my payoff. But I did an interview in, with a magazine called Long Live Vinyl in London. Oh yeah. And she, she came here for two days and interviewed me. Mm. And she could not believe <laughs> that I never got not a penny for the album design that shocked her, or <laughs> a penny for the logo. Logo design. Logo right. have made a billion dollars in fifty years. It's not quite fifty; it's forty-nine and a half years. They've probably made a half a billion anyway. You know, right? Exactly. Of course, can you imagine? And. The merchandise that sold. It's oh, unbelievable. God, the life yeah. So, uh, that, so it was good. And in the end, I think they should have straightened me. You know, I think they should have said, you know, we realize we never use that John Pash and yours is used everywhere. Yeah, we right. Want to take care of you. And so and they, they never came up with that. And no, they, they, know they know I did it because my, yeah. you know, was, was oh yeah. So tell it. me this: Do you, if you, if they're doing a concert, can you? Is there a special number you call and say, "I want to go to that concert," and you're in? You get tickets? <laughs> do they do that for you? Me, I haven't. I haven't dealt with the Stones in '74. I had two okay. years with them. It almost killed me. I, I have no <laughs> no I have no relationship with the Stones anymore. I mean they're very appreciative of what I did do, but uh, I don't think they're willing to consider compensating me for it. But I, I haven't uh, talked to them. I haven't talked to them. I, I know the people in the office, and Jane Rose is still there in, in London. But I think she's now handling all of uh, Keith's business. Mm -hmm. but anyway, yeah. I just uh, I felt that they should enable me to maybe send, maybe produce, let's say, a limited edition of 12 giant, maybe on, on I've thought about it, maybe on uh, aluminum or, or brushed stainless steel, that logo, and I would sign it, and then Mick and Keith would sign it as the official logo. Mm -hmm. And that way... I could have a gallery, an important art gallery, get get an exclusive on it, and we could charge some nice coin, you know, and that could be my recompense. But yeah, I went to the business manager, and he says, "No, nah, they're not even, they're not going to consider." That. <laughs> I saw this guy a couple of years ago, and he he wanted to get me out of his office as fast as possible. Hey, uh, uh, Craig, I, Craig, I want to tell you it was a great honor being a Mike, making vinyl judge with Judith and you. That was a very great experience for me to be with you. And uh, I wanted to say you had a lot to do with making vinyl. The first one, which was big with Jack White, you speaking with Brian Eckes and Larry Jaffe's event. 
And I wanted to bring that up, that uh, Craig was the key, keynote speaker at that point. Oh, and right. I, brought, uh, I brought my sons there, my two sons, uh, to do the entertainment. I told Brian, uh -huh. if you're hiring me to host the show, I want my kids to do the entertainment. <laughs> and my son, Nick, was up for an Emmy. He didn't win. Oh, he's wow. in a show called Succession. Oh, that's great. And, yeah, he's one of the stars of a show called Succession. And he was there. I mean, if you if you were there to hear them. Uh, so the two of them were the entertainment that night. And it's so funny that the past two days, people are sending me pictures uh, of a video of uh, John Bon Jovi and my son, Nick. Ah. They met downtown and I, Bon Jovi is there. They're, they're doing a pizza thing. That's oh, yeah, thing. right. A tomato sauce thing. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, some kind of contest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bon Jovi comes out of his limo and he says, I know this guy, you know, well, Nick is six foot eight to begin with. So he's as tall as a basketball player. So, <laughs> so he says, we asked you to do something. But now you're a big star. You don't, you don't do these things. <laughs> well, I, I got Craig, I got to tell you, Judith and I designed his first album cover, Bon Jovi's first cover. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I want to tell you, uh, it's a real pleasure having you on. Well, you're I want to show you one final thing that I forgot to show you. And oh. that is when I saw when I saw the smudge came on the Thermofax, yeah. I remembered that it, uh, there was an airbrush illustrator from England named Alan Aldrich, and he did a book called The Beatles Illustrated Lyrics. Oh, wow. And that came out about a year and a half before this project. And I uh -huh. remember that there was a song called Day Tripper that was illustrated by him. Oh, wow. And I used that. For the inspiration, really. Oh, wow! And, you know, uh, be, be, having no design background, I had to trust, you know, my uh, my taste, yeah, really, yeah, and my perception. So here's what that day tripper looks like. Oh, wow! Ah. That, came out, <laughs> that came out maybe a year and a half before uh, the, the album. So I, you know, I, I gave my guys that. I said, listen. Let this help you. <laughs> the, highlights on the, tongue, the highlights on the lips and everything. So between that and the smudge, we came up with the logo that now is the most iconic logo, certainly in the music. Yeah. In, in, maybe, amazing. maybe in lifetime. other things too. It's but lifetime. it was fun to run down memory lane with you you guys. If you have any let me, uh, uh, Craig, let, let me ask one final thing. One okay, final go ahead. Thing. This is an album I did for the Carpenters. I remember that. Yeah. And it has all their hits on it. Oh, and that's great. I, I, I had a old style, you know, those old uh, photographs that you get from Sears and Spiegel's and those kind of things. You go to their studio. I don't know if you're old enough to remember that. But anyway, uh, they, they opened up, you know, like this. Mm. They opened up. Yeah. And then you yeah, fold so. them around the back, mm. right? And right. then you open this open up, it up. <laughs> and it's 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 on the piano, you know. Oh, I love it. So I the photograph of the so cool. Yeah, they they thought it was too romantic. I said, <laughs> "Come on." They whether they think they're lovers or sisters and brothers doesn't matter. Again, right. it was like me talking to Barry White saying, "Your girlfriend <laughs> be on the cover, man." That's a great photograph. But yeah. And that logo, I started getting calls. They're doing a book at Universal. And this guy, Richard, you know, she killed herself with uh, 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 not eating. What do you call that disease when you don't eat? Anorexia. Know? Anorexia. Yeah. Anorexia. Anorexia. Yeah. So Karen, and uh, I will tell you my opinion, arguably one of the greatest voices I mean, she's right up there with Stripe yeah. and Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. She had a magnificent, untrained voice. She did. Exquisite. Mm -hmm. And so she died. And so Richard converted all of their old albums with that logo. So this is on, this logo is on every album, every single, every, they uh, sent it to me. They sent them to me. So I said, that that was just the type for the cover. I was, <laughs> I, I was just in the package, man. 
Oh my he said, God. No, you have no idea. Richard wets his pants when he sees that logo. Oh, wow. Put it on everything. So I said, maybe he owes me some bread then. <laughs> right. No. That's right. That's anyway, that, that's just further a further progression, you know, where I would see the act. I listened to the romantic songs. I thought, right. wouldn't this be nice on a bookshelf or something, you know? True. True. Like this. And of course, A&M right. went for it in a minute. Right. But I think that was my, if I have some kind of talent, that was the ability to marry ideas that I would see. I would, you know, I would see something and I would say, oh, this would be great with Cheech and Chong or with a carpenter. Yeah, yeah. So I had that sixth sense. Right. I wasn't trained, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I did pretty well. Did it, did you Thank well God. Trained in, Craig. What? What were you trained in? What did you study, if not design? Kung Fu. Yeah. I was trained um, in drug and alcohol abuse, not as a counselor, <laughs> as a test pilot. Oh, my God. I, uh, what was I trained in? mushrooms. Any interest with that? Well, I, I did a lot of experimentation with psilocybin, my, uh, all of that, you know. I, oh, have, wow. I have a master's degree in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you had a lot, it sounds like you had a fun time. I had a good time, I have to say, and most of it I can remember, but I'm only about 60%. But, uh, uh, Craig, <laughs> Craig, I want to ask you a question. What about your viewpoint on vinyl coming back now, the vinyl I area? It. I love it. I, yeah. I mean, my personal opinion is, and of course, I'm a vinyl junkie because I have a huge collection, and that was my heyday. Even though I came back, uh, you know, uh, war to do head up Warner Media back in the late '80s, and I, so I was there for about 13 years with Time mm -hmm. Warner Warner Music Group, and uh, and uh, uh, but I I love vinyl. I think the the sound of vinyl is mm -hmm. deeper and richer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not a sound engineer, but right. it's better than CDs. It's certainly a lot better than tape, audio cassettes, or any kind of tape. Right. And uh, and it's better than downloads. Mm -hmm. And I also miss I miss the graphic experience, you know, because back yeah. in the day, you would get into these covers that I've been showing you. Kids would buy that album. And I did an album for Led Zeppelin that had a wheel in it with die cut windows for you yeah. know, Jimmy Page in there. And then you turn it and his, you see Jimmy or Bonham, you know. And yeah, those are great. That's a great and album. And you cover. see his car and then you see the front door. Right. So kids would get high. They were, they, I call these tripping covers, you know. So mm -hmm. they, would, they would play the music, you know, and then they would play with, they would play, play with the cover. Yeah. What would you call today interactive? They yeah, interact yeah. with some of these covers. Yeah. You're a pioneer of interactive uh, music. Whatever that means. <laughs> uh, I want to bring up something. Uh, I want to bring up something. The Roger Dean series, album cover album, was an amazing series that I have. Your A number of your covers obviously are in it. I would suggest anybody get that series of album cover album. Right, Craig? That's a beautiful series that Roger Dean and Aubrey Powell put together. Yeah, I guess so. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether I saw it or not. 80s. It was in the 80s. Ah, yeah. Maybe I didn't see it. Well, you, Your name is all over the place uh, in there. Your covers are in it. It's a beautiful series, you know. Okay. Well, you know, honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm excited today to go through this because it's like me reflecting back on a certain period of my life where I wasn't the guy that you see in front of you and like Judas said, you must have had a good time. I, I had mm. some great times, I have to say. Yeah, you enjoyed I, what you were doing. I, I had some miraculous times, and uh, oh. uh, and and I remember a lot of them. And, uh, you know, I remember uh, bringing Jay Giles' band to Atlantic. I, I had oh, wow. a party, really? and I, I got a hold of this promotion guy for Atlantic, Mario Medias. He called me and says, I got a band for your party. <laughs> And I said, great. So I, I tell him that I'm going to give him 500 bucks. This is back in 68 or something. Yeah. I'll yeah. give him 500. How many guys in the band? You know, five guys. I said, I'll give him 500 and I'll rent them uh, a piece of, uh, you know, like a tr small truck or wagon, whatever they want. And so they came to town and 
And Atlantic was only three blocks from this club. I think it was at Andines. It was a club back in the day. Maybe you remember. But uh, a couple of the executives from Atlantic, they heard them playing. You know, it's like this is like a blues band from Boston. <laughs> and they signed them. And, and uh, Peter Wolf, the lead singer, he was going out with Faye Dunaway. Right. 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 He, made, he made her into a snow queen. Right. <laughs> um. Hey, uh, th hey, uh, Craig, thanks a lot. It was a great hey, you're interview. Welcome. You're and, welcome. Uh, it was a great job. And oh, uh, we love you final, very much. One final PS. So I told you my heart-rending, sad story about sticky fingers. Mm. One day it did find the light of day. Yeah. In 2002, I got a call from uh, MTV uh, VH1. And they said, we're doing a series called The Greatest Album Covers of All Time. Wow. And uh, you've got some covers on that. But the one that we're most interested in interviewing you about is Sticky Fingers. Sticky Fingers, right. So I said, I said to this woman producer, I said, listen, that all that stuff is in storage on the West Coast. I'm not going out there. You, <laughs> she said, we, wanna, we want the graphics and everything, the artwork and I said, I'm not going to do that. And she said, well, it's really important to us. It's important to the series. I said, okay, if it's top five of all time, I'll go out to the West Coast. You can do ah. me out there. So, yeah. so she says, don't say a word to anyone, but it is number one. It is oh. the greatest album cover. Great. So, it did have its day in the sun. <laughs> I told you that sad story, well, the glad story, right? Yeah, that's a uh, wonderful story. You know, uh, Judith and I are doing a series on album covers of 45s, and of course we have that in that series. And yeah, I thank you very it. much for your uh, for your mindset, Craig. You're I one of the great people out there. so much more of a life that we haven't even discussed, but... You know, yeah, I've been an actor, you know, since 2001. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know you're an amazing, remarkable actor and thank you. Uh, prolific. And yep. uh, I have a daughter, and you have a son who's an actor. Oh, yeah. He's, but he has 156,000 women following him. Oh. <laughs> yeah, my son, Nicholas, I want to tell you something. He was the runner up to John Legend for the sexiest man in the world. All right. I'm on the cover of People magazine. Oh. Yeah. Nicholas Brunn. Look at look him up. And he has a song out right now, if you can believe this. Wow. He has a song out called Antibodies. I think he wrote that for me. Oh, right? I wonder and, why. <laughs> have you heard about it? Have you heard of Antibodies, no, Nicholas I Brunn? But I'm gonna look for it's it. It's all over the world. It's a huge hit all over the world. Atlantic Records signed them to a contract. Oh no! I know nothing wow. about it. Nicholas Braun antibodies, and he made a video. He made a video that's with it. You'll love it. It's wow. phenomenal. Oh, we'll have to do that. We'll have to search oh, that. Out. Well, I'm, listen, it's been great. You're lifting my spirits, you, uh, you folks. You know, you come from uh, an era where you understand and we relate. You know, because yeah, we do. That we period. Do. I think you were a little bit after my period, 65 to 75. Yeah, yeah. After yeah, you. True. But the music, you know, that, that was the greatest music in the world. Let's face it. There's that nothing was. today. It, no. was. it was. It was. They, are so, they don't know what they've missed out on. Yeah. Of yeah. course, we also had good drugs to go along with. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the drugs today aren't as good. Good drugs, yeah. Good drugs. I love good drugs. Uh, anyway, yeah, I, that's a sentimental thing. I, I'm very <laughs> active in recovery now. I, I, uh, I've been sober, as I said, April 3rd. Good. Was that's great. One years. That's so great. I, I'm, I've been blessed beyond my yeah. wildest dreams yeah. to be still talking to you like this at 81. I'm 81 years oh, old. Oh, congratulations, man. This is the oldest I've been. 